Having the right footwear can make all the difference between a great day in the field and a miserable one. But how do you find the right pair of boots, ones that will keep your feet dry and comfortable while protecting you from injury and making it easier for you to do your job? Don't worry, we've got the inside scoop on finding the perfect pair of boots for tree workers coming right up on 10 out of 10. On the show brought to you by Tree Care Marketing Solutions, we explore business insights for the tree care industry with leading experts. Joining us today is Tracy Klein. She's the forestry brand ambassador for Hikes North America. She's been with the company since 2009. She was previously their Midwest sales manager. And not only was she responsible for her own sales territory, but she also did a lot of training around footwear certification and footwear safety in the forestry industry. So welcome, Tracy. It is a real pleasure to have you here today. It's absolutely a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. I appreciate uh, you having me, Monica. Great. Well, you know, before we get into boots, I have a question for you that I think sure. a lot of our listeners are probably curious about. Now, the company is spelled H-A-I-X. How do you pronounce that? <laughs> You'd be surprised how often we get that question. It is actually pronounced hikes like you're going hiking. The name is actually part of Xavier Heimel, who started the company. And we took Heimel as part of his uh, last name and Xavier and put it together for hikes. Okay, that explains it because it does not a real word, in other words. <laughs> no, no, it, it's, it's our word. <laughs> okay, so hikes. So tell us a little bit about the company itself. It, it's relatively new in footwear for tree service in North America, right? Correct. It, it's a little less known in the U.S. market currently, but Hikes is a major footwear manufacturer worldwide. We're a German company. Unlike a lot of other companies, we actually manufacture our own footwear. We started in 1948 as a private manufacturer for other brands. For example, make product for other people and they would put their name on it. But as of the 1990s, we came out and said, okay, we're going to have our own branded footwear. And just so you understand what markets we hit, it's not just forestry, but workwear, police, fire, EMS, and huge military contracts around the world. Just a little tidbit, we are the largest fire boot manufacturer in the world. Oh, so if something awful happens and our house burns down, the firemen and firewomen are probably going to be wearing hikes boots? Absolutely. All right. Well, let's hope for no fires. No more fires. Yes, no fires today. today. <laughs> but, uh, no, no fires. So, okay. So now you make a wide range of boots, different industries, focusing specifically on the forestry industry. Yes. So if we're looking at boots, safety is obviously going to be a primary concern for a lot of people. But there are also things like durability, versatility, comfort is going to be a big one. Yes. So let's leave safety for a moment and, and look at durability. So if someone's looking for boots and they want them to last more than just a couple of months or a season, what should they be looking for? Okay, that's something that we do get a lot of questions about, obviously, because people spend a lot of money on footwear, especially in the forestry industry. The boots aren't cheap. Let's just face it. Some of the things that I always recommend people to look for and personally that I look for, you need to look for the quality. Many times that has to do with how it's constructed. It has to do with the hides, for example. With hikes, we use bull hide leather. That's different than other manufacturers who only use a cowhide. What makes that different? The bullhide leather is a little tougher, stiffer. So while it may take a little bit longer to break in, it's going to last longer. It resists abrasion and punctures much better. And it keeps shape and rigidity. And what that does not only lends itself to the longevity of the product, but also good ankle protection and things of that nature. Okay, so you're initially compromising comfort maybe a little bit to get that durability over the long term. That's but correct. Are, are there boots that are made out of different types of material other than leather? 
yes, in the marketplace, you'll see some different things. I've seen everything from rubber boots with a Kevlar lining, for example, for cut resistance. I've also seen a lot of boots. They use the female hides. The issues with the female hides, uh, while they are less expensive to manufacture, they tend to become very weak in their structure because they can get pregnant. So the hide expands and contracts. And what happens is your boot will wear out more quickly because it loses its shape and rigidity. So for durability, you really should be looking for bull hides, not cow cow hides. Correct. And as of to date, uh, we're the only ones that use the bull hide in the industry. Okay. So that's that's definitely a, a reason to look at hikes boots. Absolutely. Now, in terms of maintaining your boots, you've got a great pair of boots. They're made out of bull hide. How do you ensure that they're going to last as long as possible? What, what can you do? Yeah, sure. Now, this one's, a, this one's a tricky one because in the field, my guys and gals never take care of their boots like they should. I don't um, think any of us do, really. No. And... and You know, we think it's a work boot and we come in and we just throw them by the door or whatever. And we go in the house, we put them on the next day and we don't think about them. But truly, if you think about uh, footwear in general, if you're wearing leather boots, it's no different than the skin on your hands. You definitely want to make sure that you, you know, give them some TLC. By that, just wiping them clean with a little warm soap and water. Take a brush to them occasionally. Just wipe them down. Be cognizant of that, especially in the wintertime uh, when you're also dealing with salt in certain regions of the country. It, you know, just treat it. Think about it like your hands. They get dry. They crack you know, keep them nice and moisturized. For example, we will have a certain type of leather treatment for hours that we sell with our product and other companies do as well. Right. That's what I was going to ask. Like you do put moisturizer on your hands. Is there some sort of treatment for boots? And so you should do that every so often. Yes. Okay. It will extend the life of the product for sure. That, you know, just just overall checking everything, checking the seams, the soles, make sure that your sole wear is is where it needs to be. Just like a set of tires on a car, you want to make sure that you check everything from time to time, that everything is in good working condition before you go out. Okay. And I guess that ties into to safety as well. So if the, the soles are really worn or you're seeing cracks uh, at the seams and things like that, the boot may not be safe for, for use. That's correct. The thing is, is you want to check everything because if you, anything from the sole construction to delamination, things like that, that's where the sole will separate from the shoe. Luckily, our technology, the way we build our product, it stays intact. But many people will use a, like a sewn on boot construction. And those tend to completely fall apart because, you know, those, tr- those threads are actually on the ground and they're being worn through. You'll see it's very popular in the forestry market. People use them like the typical logging boot with the big logging heel. Those things tend to be sewn on and they can just come apart while you're working. And some of them that are glued, if it's not done properly, they will delaminate. And then your feet will get wet. You get water coming inside. So there's just a whole list of problems that go on. I, I know I've I've glued soles back onto boots to keep them going for just a little bit longer. It's not yeah. a good long-term fix. Yeah. And then another thing too, that we're very cognizant of the liners inside the boots, for example. Our liners, it's very interesting because we actually affix the liners into the midsole during manufacturing. So what happens is they don't pull out. Oh. So you're going to maintain that that a waterproof membrane properly. It's going to keep the, the feet dry and cooler in the summer, uh, warmer in the winter months. That was one of my questions about how do you, <laughs> what should you look for? I mean, if you're working in a very hot climate versus say up north in Canada in the winter, right. I was just in Edmonton, it was 40 below. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think too many people were doing tree work, but you know, if you were wearing boots in those conditions, that is that that liner in the midsole is that going to help keep it well what it does is correct and what it does is it's going to assure that it's going to stay in the boot the other thing i tell people it's so critical and nobody really thinks about it but it's socks 
many people want to go to one of the big box stores and buy a six pack of socks for like five, 10 bucks and wear them this is absolutely the worst thing that you could do. When you wear, for example, a cotton sock, think of a, a towel. And when you get out of the shower, it holds moisture. So think about that moisture being held inside the boot. If it's summertime and you're sweating, you're getting hot. Yeah. That can lead to a lot of foot problems like fungal infections, not to mention odors and things like that. In the wintertime, you get hot and clammy and you get that cold bone chill. So what we recommend uh, in the footwear industry from our perspective is a merino wool blend. And yeah, I know thinking of wearing a wool sock in the summer is like, what are you crazy? But <laughs> Honestly, I wear um, our short uh, athletic socks working out in the summer, and it's the only thing dry on my body when I go to take everything off. So it's a natural fiber, just like on an animal. So it pulls the moisture away from the foot. So it keeps you nice and dry and warm in the, in the winter, and it keeps you cool in the summer because it pulls the sweat away from the foot. Okay. So I, socks I, I, are super important, not just boots. So the investment is not just the boots, it's the socks that go with it. And they, they make a complete footwear package, I guess. Yes, absolutely. It's, you know, if you're going to buy a $400 pair of boots and uh, need to get a, a certain amount of time out of them, you also want to invest in the socks as well, because otherwise you're going to lose some of that breathability. Okay. And that was actually one of our other questions was, what is... A boot, a good quality boot, how much should you look to spend to get that? Well, and this is a tricky question because just because something has a really big name brand doesn't mean that it is of the highest quality. There are, and every consumer, whether it be in the footwear industry, clothing or whatever, just because it has a good name doesn't mean the quality is there. So you don't always get what you pay for. The things you should look for, again, look at all the seals and the seams in the boot. Check where it's made. Our boots uh, are made in Europe. We source every part and piece from Europe. We don't buy from any third world countries. No, we don't use anything from the Asian market. So check where it's made how it's made. You can check reviews online, of course, just like anybody else would. Just before you make that investment. Also, the biggest thing I tell people, try it on. Try the boots on, no matter what. Because what also is important is proper fit. So if you're going to spend this kind of money, try the boot on. Because every boot manufacturer, though there's supposed to be an industry standard, there isn't. Like all of us, we'll have I've got three different size shoes in my closet. It's they all just fit, how it is. But yeah, right. And so make sure you try the product on and make sure there's no heel slip in the back. That can cause blisters. So that's important. A good fit on a product is absolutely important. So now that you, you mentioned they're really boots don't all fit the same way. They might be the same size, but you get into a different manufacturer, you get into a different style, you get into a different boots for different purposes. A lot of people still buy online. So how would you know which size you should be getting if you're buying it online? Now, that's a very good question. What we tell, just for example, with our company, we have different lines of boots for the logging industry, everything from a machine operator who doesn't cut trees all the way up to the person that uses a chainsaw all day. Everything from just a standard safety toe shoe to a class one, class two cut protection. All of those boots are different for different segments as we kind of touched on quickly earlier. What I would tell you is that, for example, with our class two logging boots, they all run big. So we make a notation and our distributors will make a notation on their website that says, hey, these hikes boots, for example, run a half size too big. Please order a half size down just because of the way they're made and the nature and the style of the boot. Whereas one of our class one cut protection boots runs true to size because for different applications, different things, different boots for different stuff. And they do fit differently. So. I would say make sure they've got a good return policy, exchange, <laughs> read the reviews online, and or try to find a local source to try the boots on and do it that way. Okay. 
So with fit, aside from size, you mentioned one thing, you mentioned heel slippage. What other things should people be considering when they're trying to figure out, does this boot really fit me? Absolutely. So some things that are really important to think about as you get proper footwear for for a working boot is it's a little bit difficult to tell where your toes are at because they have safety toes, right? Mm -hmm. You can't do the old mom thing and try to see where your toes at, right? So what we have uh, installed in our boots is a specific type of insole that has a line at the toe that says perfect fit. So if your toe goes over that line, you know to go half size down, or if it goes above it, you need to get a half size up. If that's the insole and your foot is in the boot, how, how can you see it? How do you know? Well, all of our insoles are removable and washable, which is fantastic. You take the insole out, and I know you probably can't see this here, but it'll say perfect fit. And there's a little line inside. Oh, the okay. So you have them take the insole out, step on it, put their toes there. Voila. It tells you exactly where you're at. Because the one thing you don't want to do, and if you don't have that handy dandy insole with maybe other brands or whatever, a good thing to think about if your toes, even one toe is hitting the end of your boot, then it is too small because what can happen at that point, you can get hammer toes, all these different problems. You also need Use to be able to Yes. You need to be able to make sure you can wiggle your toes freely inside the toe box Mm -hmm. of the boot. If not, it can cause bunions later on. A lot of foot problems, right? So make sure you've got good width. You can spread your toes. Don't just try the boots on. Put them on, stand up in them. Because when you stand, that's when the foot starts to splay. So then you get a real true idea of how it feels on. Okay. And how about lacing them up or tightening them how how tight should you do that you know if if you've got maybe a narrower ankle can you just cinch down on that thing and it's still a good fit or is that not going to work no actually that's a very good question and uh, something that we incorporate in and some other manufacturers do as well but that's something that we really take to heart in our boots we have what's called a two zone lacing system so what you can do is You can cinch the bottom part. Say you have a wide foot and you have a narrow leg. You need this wide. You can spread this out. Use these lock off laces and then you can tighten this as much as you need to. Or vice versa, if you have a very narrow foot. Of course, these are available in different widths as well. But if it's still got too much slack in it, you can tighten this up, lock it off and loosen this part in case you have like a thicker leg, for example. So you can do that. And it is important to do that. And also it'll keep your foot steady. If you lock it off, it'll keep you from moving forward when you're going in different terrain. Right. Great. That, that certainly makes a difference because everybody's built differently. That's right. So now what about, we've got people, different roles, right? Some people climb, some people are ground workers. They're going to need different kinds of boots. And for all of our climbers out there, I know that finding a climbing boot is really difficult sometimes because what you want when you're spiking up a tree is going to be kind of different than when you're walking out on a branch. So what kind of considerations should you be looking at for, say, climbers versus ground crew, different roles within the industry? Absolutely. So the one thing that you want to think about is if you're strictly climbing and that's all you do, there are boots out there that are just designed for climbing. You need to make sure uh, you've got enough space, whether you're climbing with with straps and ropes or if you're using gaffs or spikes, you know, the ones that you put on that walk that lock in and to the tree. You have to make sure that they've got spot to clear that at the bottom of the sole. Um, There are a couple of brands that specifically do that. Our boots are multi-purpose, actually. So you can go from groundwork to climbing in the same boot. But if you want something strictly just for climbing, you can do that, too. For groundwork, you want to make sure that you've got great comfort, that you have 
a waterproofing system so your feet stay dry while you're working. You want to make sure that there's a nice arch support or that it's built anatomically correct. And that's something that we are really big on is an orthopedic fit in all of our footwear. Because you're talking about on the ground 10, 12 hours a day versus in a tree hanging out climbing. So that person's going to need a different boot, obviously, or, to, you know, different it, for different comfort levels, different types of work, so to speak, versus the guy that's that's running um, a machine. Like if they're running a skitter, something like that, they may just need a safety toe shoe. So in that instance, they've got a wide variety they can choose from, but just make sure it meets the ASTM certifications. Okay, so that that's going to be an important point. Yeah. So is there, it sounds like there really isn't one boot for all purposes that really you need to think about what you're going to be using those boots for and then purchase something that's appropriate for that rather than trying to force it. I I know I've talked with a lot of climbers who are saying, you know, they're using spikes, climbing spikes, and the sole isn't stiff enough or the shank isn't stiff enough in there. And man, that hurts when you're trying to climb all day. Correct. Uh, So you really need to look for different boots or shoes for different purposes is correct. And, but we're, we're pretty fortunate though at hikes being so high tech in the footwear world that all of our forestry line, they're all designed for climbing and or groundwork. So you can do both. So that's, that's kind of a nice feature because we do include the shanks, the multiple arch support. So you can go from climbing, uh, all day long in a boot from us going straight to groundwork, or you could even go drive a truck, you know, and then we also have a class one and class two cut protection. We make more of a lightweight armorous boot. And then we go to a class two cut protection, which has an additional level of Kevlar for chainsaw protection. So while, yeah, you can buy boots for different things, we do make some all in one type of boot that will do that. Okay. All right. So you, you mentioned a couple of things there with different levels of cup protection. So let's talk about safety. Yes. What are the important safety features in a boot? How is that going to protect you? Okay. Historically, in the past, we've seen, you know, chaps, you know, people are starting to wear chaps now, more cut resistant pants. Mm-hmm. So back in the day, people would just wear a hat, a pair of glasses, and a pair of jeans and you see them out or they're not wearing glasses or a hat right. and they're just out cutting away and we see it and we still see it today. But for professional people that are working for companies that have safety measures in place, you're going to see everything from chainsaw pants, jackets, shirts. And a lot of people have not given it a lot of thought that you need chainsaw protection in a boot. But the fact of the matter is, is that if you drop something or you have your foot you know, on a log or whatever you're going to cut, I mean, your foot is right there, right where that saw is. So we are definitely at the forefront of that in offering these, not just a leather boot, because in the past, people just wear a leather boot to cut with, and they still do to this day. But with all of the safety things in place, and the market is changing quite a bit to go more pro safety, we're a little bit ahead of the game with our class one and class two cut protection. It's super important. I mean, if you've got doing some light arborist work, for example, maybe the class one is okay for you. But if you are doing heavy, like if you're you're bucking and you're doing all of these things, you really need to consider a class two cut protection. So what, what's the difference? Class one, class two, what's in the boot that makes them different? Sure. So what it is, it's a piece of a Kevlar material, and it depends on how many layers. And it has to do with how many seconds, how many rotations per second with the chainsaw. So one just has a different rotation per second than the other. Okay. For people, just as an opinion, our class one, for example, has a carbon fiber toe. While carbon fiber does great in the crush test in the lab and meets and exceeds ASTM, If you're going to drop a chainsaw, if you're doing heavy chainsaw work, groundwork, we would and I would always recommend the class two because you have a steel toe and steel with a chainsaw is going to bounce. So it's just more a higher level of safety. So you've got two sets levels of Kevlar with a steel toe. It's pretty much the best you're going to get. 
Okay. So what about, you know, we always hear about injuries from dropping things. So if you're going to get a 400 pound log dropped on your foot, what kind of protection can a boot provide for that? Oh, it, it's, it's amazing what it can do. So even carbon fiber or steel, you're, the, the crush or crash impacts that you have, these boots, and, and not just ours, just an industry standard, it's incredible what they can stand. You know, there's always this debate, carbon fiber versus steel toe. We can debate about that all day long. There's difference of opinion. Uh, the carbon fiber is it's exactly what it says, it's fiber. So it's just going to give when it gets hit. But, you know, over time that can break down. Steel, the steel is there. And you can bend that steel, though. I mean, if it gets hit hard enough. But with a chainsaw, professional opinion, a lot of chainsaw work, I would go with a steel toe. Okay. That would just be me. Now, what, one of the questions around steel toes, it's metal. If you're in a cold environment, doesn't that get cold? Very good question. And we get it almost daily. It can at times get cold, yes. But uh, what I will tell you is going back to the proper socks and things like that again. We sell all over the world. And in my market includes North America, which obviously is Canada. And we sell so many of our forestry boots into the Canadian market with no complaints uh, with regards to the transfer of the cold. Now, does it happen? I'm sure it does. But I think what happens is it's not at a level where it's alarming. It is metal. It is going to conduct cold. But also the way that we design the inside, it's going to give you a little bit of protection there from the cold. And also with wearing the right socks and not having that moisture inside the boot, it's not going to carry that and transmit it as well. Okay. So it sounds like the key once again is socks, the right socks. Yes, the right socks. And, and you have to understand too, sometimes depending on the weather, they're not out cutting. I mean, it depends on how cold it is. So it's very rare in the years that I've spent, I've been in the footwear industry in general, about 25 years. So it's, you really only get complaints when it's super cold. So again, good socks. And I think you'd get complaints in super cold weather, regardless of what you're wearing. Like yes, in anything. <laughs> yeah. But what's also important too, um, is we insulate in the footbed. So about 70% of your heat and cold exchange from footwear when you're wearing it comes from the bottom of the shoe, not in the upper. So people will ask, well, how many grams of insulate or how much insulation is your boot? Well, it's not insulated in the upper because it doesn't need to be because it's got the multiple layers of Gore-Tex, which keeps it dry because dry keeps you, you know, warm and comfortable. Also with the insulation here at the footbed, it's super important. Uh, you'd be surprised at how many footwear manufacturers do not insulate on the ground level, but insulate the uppers. And you'll hear guys complaining that I'm sweating in my boots. It's too hot. Well, it's because they don't need all the upper. They need the bottom up. Okay. So maybe we can go back to that. So earlier when we were talking about comfort and we were talking about working in different conditions, hot, cold, wet, the word Gore-Tex never came up. So I'm wondering if we can kind of go back to that, kind of revisit that question about comfort for different weather or t temperature conditions and what to look for. Yeah. Okay. So one thing that I will tell you is that hikes, we're the biggest user of Gore in all of Europe. So Gore-Tex is, we only use Gore-Tex. It's the best in the market. It is, it is the top. If you purchase boots that do not use a Gore-Tex membrane, and this is not a plug for Gore, this is just my professional opinion. Since 1995, working in footwear, Gore is the only one that's going to be breathable with the maximum breathability. If you put your hand inside of a plastic bag, it builds up moisture and it has no way to escape. So you're essentially sticking your foot in if you get something with a generic waterproof membrane. If somebody says, oh, our boot is waterproof. If you don't see this Gore-Tex tag, you're more than likely going to build up a lot of moisture. You're going to get hot in the summer. You're going to get cold and clammy in the winter. That is the most breathable membrane on the market. So something else to look for when you're buying your boots, look for that tag. It's going to make a big difference in the long run. All right. So just, just so I'm clear, boots, they're made out of leather and Gore-Tex together. Correct. 
Yeah. So our leather is a hydrophobic leather, which means it's water resistant. But once you drop that membrane behind it, it makes the boot completely waterproof. It is watertight. There should be no water getting into that boot whatsoever. And just because you use a Gore-Tex membrane, if you don't manufacture the boot right, doesn't mean it's going to work either. But the way that we manufacture with the liners fixed into the midsole, everything works properly. If you make what's called a booty construction, which looks like a sock construction inside the boot, over time, as you put the boot on and off, and we've all had shoes do that, and we pull our foot out, the liner comes out. Yeah. But that's not possible, for example, in the way we manufacture so these are just things to look for. The materials, where they're made, how they're made. Do they have an orthopedic fit? Leather heel counters, for example. We don't use plastic here. Over time, as you wear leather, this is going to cup around the back of the heel like a baseball glove effect and give a custom fit around your heel. If you have plastic back here and you're jamming your foot in and out, that plastic breaks. It cuts you in the back of the foot and the boots are garbage, basically. You have to throw them away. So it's the little details such as that. Look for the warranties on boots, refurbishing options. You know, those are other things to look for as well. What, what would be a good warranty? How long should we expect? In the hikes, we offer a one-year warranty on our product. Now, what I will tell you is that in the forestry industry, these guys are lucky to get three, six, and nine months out of their boots. Uh, that tends to be the, the magic numbers. I've got guys coming up to me saying they've had their hikes going on two years and over, which is unheard of in our industry. It, especially these guys are so hard on boots. I mean, we sell boots that firemen wear. The forestry guys are harder on their boots than boots that we see going in and out of fires. I'm not kidding. It, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing a guy will walk up and say these are three months old. And I think they're wearing a five-year-old pair of boots. They just, it's just the nature of the business. They get destroyed very easily. But what I will tell you as far as longevity, the hikes really stands up. I've not seen any other boots stand up as long as ours. Okay. Wow. That's, uh, that's something. Um, you mentioned refurbishing boots. Yes. What does that involve? Okay. So what we offer is a program and you can, it's a company called New Shoe. It's N-U-S-H-O-E.com. They are a company that's an authorized hikes repair center for our boots. It's too expensive to send them back to Germany to be, you know, refurbished or whatnot. So say, for example, you get this boot and you rip an eyelid off in six months or a piece of stitching were to come loose or something. You can actually send this off to be refurbished. It takes about two or three weeks. It's in San Diego, California, and they will correct anything that's gone wrong with the boot. And they will call you beforehand to let you know. If you let some things go too long, it can't be repaired though. The only caveat is on this particular model, our class two, we use a Vibram sole. The company Vibram is an Italian company. A lot of people say, I wear a Vibram boot. Well, it's not a Vibram boot, it's a sole. And they make everything from a cheap one to a very high-end sole. They will not give us replacement soles for these boots. So with that being said, could you go to a local cobbler and have a, a new sole put on these boots? You could. Now, with our class one protection boot that we have, we designed the sole on that. So that one actually can be refurbished. So for $55, you can have the treads redone. And for $75, you can have the complete boot reconditioned, which means new insoles, any stitching, laces, anything like that will be replaced, deodorized, polished, and sent back to you like a new pair of boots. It sounds like a pretty good deal. 75 bucks when you consider new boots run, what, on average 400 or so, something like yeah, that? Yeah, it is. And, you know, that's, you know, that's another advantage to some companies um, out there that offer that. So, and we're one of them. So, so does New Shoe work with other manufacturers as well? They do work with other shoe manufacturers. I can't speak to whether or not they work with some of our competitors in the field. Um that's something they would have to check into. But I know they work with Birkenstock and things like that. So there's some other name brand places that New Shoe works with. But uh, sometimes your local cobbler can work on things as well. True. Shop local, as they say. Yes, shop local. That's right. Actually, if you're looking for boots, the best place you can find them, we have 
you know, you can always check with your local forestry suppliers. We have some major companies such as things like Cheryl Tree, Tree Stuff, Arborware, just to name a few of the big ones that offer our line. They also offer some of the other lines as well for forestry. If you have an interest in hikes specific, feel free to give me a call. Um, I'll give you my cell phone number. I'll be glad to direct you to the place to go to try them. Or if we're going to have a trade show in a local area to have you stop by and see us, we're always at TCIA every year and some other shows throughout the year. Cell phone number 859-629-1377. You can always check us out at hikes.com. You can also send me an email. It's at t.klein at hikes.com. And that's t as in Tracy dot Klein, C-L-I-N-E at hikes.com. So thank you, Tracy. That was really, really informative. And I hope some of our listeners or readers get in touch with you. If they wanted to know where trade shows are that they could come and see you, is that also going to be on the Hikes website? Absolutely. So if you are curious if we're going to be in your area, feel free to go to our website, check out our trade show list and look and see where we're going to be. If you don't see something, but you're still interested in taking a look at our product, just give me a shout. Be glad to direct you in the right way. Or maybe I'll just happen to be traveling through your area at some point. And if you and your company are looking for a demo or something like that, I'm also open to come out to do that as well. Okay. I'm sure some some of our listeners are going to take you up on that offer. Absolutely. Thanks everyone for joining us on this episode of 10 out of 10, where we looked at how the perfect footwear can make all the difference for you and your crews. You can find more details about this episode on the TCMS website at treecaremarketingsolutions.com slash 10 footwear. You'll also find all of our other episodes right there on the website. Thanks again for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again next time.